plane, which I can't fly, and I'm flying it back from Albuquerque. So I bought an airplane. Being that it's a tailwheel and I have exactly zero tailwheel time, me and an instructor flew up to Albuquerque to wait this airplane. The airplane was based near Las Vegas and the owner very generously agreed to fly to Albuquerque to meet us there so we didn't have to fly the Las Vegas to Albuquerque segment which is the really high and hot segment with the two of us with less experience than he does so um, that was very kind of him. Here she comes. You're looking at a 1946 Lusca. Look at how proudly she taxis onto that ramp. We've decided to name her Evelyn. It's a beautiful name and um, we will talk in future videos about a female aviator named Evelyn Sharp. So that's who she's named after. Now my instructor and the previous owner went for a quick test flight. Um, the density altitude was getting up there so I figured let's get the two experienced guys in there and have them shake it down. While they were out on their flight, I went through the logs and it was a little overwhelming going through 70 years of paperwork. Based on what I saw, it, it had received good care its entire life and, and everything checked out. So once the guys came back from their test flight, money was exchanged, papers were signed, and I was the proud new owner of a 1946 Luska. Now, at this point, it was well into the afternoon, density altitude was pushing 9,000 feet, and it simply wasn't worth taking off. Although the takeoff would be easy, we wouldn't be getting any kind of climb performance. So we decided to taxi around and, and actually practice taxiing, which was really difficult to get used to. Albuquerque ground was very generous in giving us some of their ramp to practice on and here you can see us basically doing donuts on it. Being the YouTuber I am, I added a GoPro mount, um, put in an old Garmin GPS that actually fit the plane and was wired in and uh, did a little detailing. Take some uh, C2. and treat that window just to help us out tomorrow. Makes it more bug proof. Next morning, got up at 4.30, got to the airport by five and uh, we got the plane ready for a early morning departure. It was still 75 degrees, which was significantly cooler than the day before. Um, we still took off with a pretty light fuel load because we were gonna be pushing gross weight otherwise. Luckily, this airplane doesn't burn a lot of fuel, so um, eight gallons of fuel is two hours of flying. Got the plane all loaded up, our plan was to take off and depart straight south out of Albuquerque. There was a pass going um, directly east from Albuquerque, but with a new airplane and not knowing its climb performance, we just weren't comfortable doing that. Almost. Let's give it some more primer. And it was a good thing we did because it, it ended up taking a good 20 to 30 miles to, to reach a safe crossing altitude. And here's my first terrifying takeoff experience. Thankfully my instructor helped me get it back on track and we tried again. Surely it couldn't happen again, right? There we 
goes again. Luckily this time we were fast enough where we actually got it to fly. Um, we're gonna dissect these super sketchy takeoff and landings in a future video. Right about the time we hit 9,500 feet, we were ready to start turning around that line of ridges um, that's east of Albuquerque. And from there, it was a quick little cruise over to Santa Rosa, um, which was Route 66 Airport. It sounded pretty cool. It was a two hour flight out of Albuquerque, so we we're about ready to stretch our legs and take on some more fuel. Fortunately, the altitude was also uh, significantly lower at Santa Rosa. Now again, we're gonna analyze this landing um, in detail, in excruciating detail later on. But basically what happened is we're coming in too fast. Um, the original plan was to actually just do a wheel landing touch and go, just to get a feel for the airplane. Um, but somehow it ended up just being a full stop landing. One of the issues with a higher density altitude, of course, is that your ground speed is a good deal higher, and fortunately it wasn't very windy, um, but that also did increase our ground speed landing. But you know what? Out west they have, they have some long runways. Couldn't get away with a landing like this in Iowa on a 2,000 foot runway. So after quick fuel stop and bathroom break, and you'll see why it was important to evacuate your bowels in a bathroom, um, because this next takeoff was not great. We opted for runway 19. Um, it was a little bit wider than runway 26, and the wind was about the same on both. Um, a little bit of crosswind on both, but again, the winds were still relatively calm. So determined not to let the nose veer right again, like it did in Albuquerque. Kind of briefed myself on what was going on, and um, I think one of the challenges is that I just don't have a good feel yet for when that tail starts to rise and when that left turning tendency increases. Luckily my instructor again saved the day, um, got the right wing up high and now he's yelling at me to put the nose down because I, I was ready to escape from the ground but you, know, you don't want to stall the plane trying to yank it off the ground. So luckily again nothing got damaged but it's really an eye opening experience on how quickly things can go sideways. The tail dragger really is like a fighter jet in that a good fighter jet's inherently unstable and a tail dragger is also inherently unstable on the ground. So basically, I'm like a really bad fighter pilot.
After a three hour flight, we were ready for our um, approach into Liberal, Kansas. Now at this point, it was in the high 90s and there was a wind starting to pick up. Um, on short final, I basically found the plane to be unstable and I uh, handed controls over to my instructor who with little notice then had to fix my bad and fast approach. Still, still learning how to slow this plane down. Um, and you can see that also wasn't a great landing. Again, high density altitude and um, high temperatures just don't make for pretty landings in a tail dragger. Now our initial plan was to fly back in one day, which at this point seemed completely ludicrous. It was way too hot, it was getting way too windy. Um, and you know, with all the weight we had in the plane, it started to make more sense for me to go home um, and let my instructor fly by himself. That way he'd be more comfortable and, and the plane would be more comfortable. So I was looking for a rental car, couldn't find one, but by some miracle, the Liberal Kansas Airport has airline service. So booked a flight to Denver and Denver to Cedar Rapids. Our first takeoff, however, on the commercial flight, we entered the runway and this is what happened. Nothing. It's almost like we just taxied around the block again. I don't know if maybe they had to burn off some fuel or if there was a traffic conflict, but it was really strange. But it did give me another chance to say goodbye to Evelyn, who's parked on the ramp there, um, tied down to deal with that Kansas wind. The second takeoff attempt, um, at this point, is a little bit more normal. Full power, full power. Yeah, this, we're going home. All right, so Evelyn should be landing at Iowa City any minute now. So me and Ava are gonna go over and I'm gonna welcome her. Oh, what's wrong? My tummy hurts because when I was watching TV, I ate three, all the uh, three pieces of pizza in a cup of uh, fruit. Oh, pudding. So my tummy hurts. Okay, well you just sit back and relax, okay? Welcome, Evelyn. Yes, oh, we should have made signs. We should have made welcome signs. Oh, well. All right. Be a member, make a cheer. <laughs> yeah, we will just cheer. Or if we took a fire truck, we could have like a water salute, but I'm guessing the plane will be well in the ground and parked by the time we even get there, so um, yeah, we, we get to well in the plane. It turns out I'm really into vehicles that are really hard to get in and out of. These two are 70 years apart though. Um, in all seriousness, I'm super excited to share this journey with you guys on how to fly tail draggers, um, how to maintain an old airplane. This is all new to me. Um, I just make them shiny. We're definitely gonna make this airplane shiny. Um, as far as maintenance, the uh, front fell off. So, so the spinner flew off and luckily didn't hit anything else. So that'll be the first order of business. But I hope you subscribe, say hi. If you fly Luscom, give me your tips, strategies, and um, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks so much for watching.